I'm actually going to start with a Q&A instead of ending with a Q&A because the book is so much about conversation. You know, we had, we sent questions out to over a thousand women and wound up publishing about 640 of their answers and getting contributions. So just to get in the spirit of the book, I want to ask the group gathered here a couple of questions and you can just raise your hand. So my first one is, who here is wearing something they feel they spent too much money on? Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Who here is wearing something that they borrowed from a friend or a loved one? One, two. Nice. Um, what's another one? Who here wishes they were wearing something different? <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> um, and who here thinks they look like either their mother or father? <laughs> oh, that's a nice, so you're, yeah. Um, so this, these kind of questions kind of give you the spirit of how we started talking to other people about what they were wearing. I mean, um, the book started when Sheila Hetty, who's a very old friend of mine who I worked on with the auction catalog actually, um, wanted to find a book about how other women dressed because she wanted to dress better. And she went to a big box bookstore and all the books in the fashion and, and style section were about how to be, how to look more French and what, you know, photos of Audrey Hepburn and all of these, these sort of very aspirational things and they didn't actually talk about why women wore what they wore. And so she uh, emailed a handful of women and myself and Heidi Julevitz included with questions like, what do you think about when you get dressed in the morning? Who do you admire? Um, what are some rules that you have that you wouldn't necessarily want anyone else to have? And as Heidi and I worked on these questions, Heidi was the first one to say this could be a book that's not gonna be like any other style book. And it, it just gained momentum from there. They invited me to be part of it and I immediately saw how, how it could look and how it could feel and how the tone would be, which I think is, was so fun because, um, because of the books that are out there already, because of the conversations that we all have on style, which is mainly fashion media, which is a lot of the time advertising driven and not um, intellectually driven. And then another thing that came up in all of this when Heidi and Sheila and I would get together and talk was how much we had to say and none of us worked in the fashion industry. We were, you know, novel, at, you know, and none of us were scientists either. So it wasn't like a, a, um, an academic thing. It was just um, three women, one who didn't really like clothes, two who did, um, who, you know, don't spend a lot of money on clothes, talking about clothes in, in very deep ways. And so um, some of the, um, what was also interesting about the three of us was we had very different skill sets. Heidi uh, co-founded this literary magazine called The Believer that was made up of a bunch of um, interviews. She teaches literature at Columbia, and so she knew a lot of intellectuals, writers, um, a very, very skilled interviewer. Sheila's a novelist, a, you know, an experimental novelist and playwright, and she came at it again as a very good interviewer and um, thinker, and then I came to it from a visual angle, but also sort of saying, and this was important to me to say, we don't want to alienate the fashion industry. We don't want this to be anti-vogue or anti, you know, anti-fashion. Um, and because I had some ties to that, and because I do, I do care about design. My father was an industrial designer. I really wanted it to, to include absolutely as much diversity as possible. And so we just started, and the one thing that I said off the top, and I'll talk about the visuals a little bit later, but the one thing I said off the top was no pictures of women because of 
Because of how visual culture works, and I was talking about this in an interview just a second ago, you think you get the whole story, and you really don't. And so I really didn't want there to be the pictures of the women that we were talking to, because if I see a picture of a woman and I don't relate to how she looks, I'm not going to hear her voice in the same way as if I read it. Something that happens with reading, too, is if you, if you read something in first person, I did this, I saw this, just with text, with gray text, you put yourself in the character. This is just how literature and how reading works. And so we really wanted that connection. So one of my first things was no pictures of women. There are some pictures of women in the book, and we'll see that later. But um, that was also an establishing point in terms of how we wanted, how we wanted this cacophony of conversation to happen. This is the British cover in each um, territory that it's been published in, which is German, English, American, and Dutch. It's the same sort of layout with a different pattern behind it. Um, it would be nice if it were published in Italy, so we could do, <laughs> we could do yet another pattern. I uh, know. Um, and so these are the end papers. This is actually the PDF that the printer used to print from the official one. Um, so as you can see, it doesn't look like a fashion publication. It's not glossy, it's not oversized. It, I wanted it to feel literary. I wanted it to feel um, like, a, like something that you would really want to read. An interesting thing that's come out of this is um, men like it. <laughs> it's sort of this strange thing where, oh, it looks like a book, not a fashion thing. So, hey, like wife or friend, you know, what, men will pick it up and go, have you seen this book about fashion to women? And women are like, yeah, I've seen it. But there's a funny thing in that somehow it's lit, like it, I don't know, looks legitimate or something, which is interesting. So these were some of the questions that we started with. What is the most transformative conversation you have ever had with someone on the subject of fashion or style? With whom do you talk about clothes? At any given time, the survey that we sent out only had 20 questions on it. But as we got answers back, and some of the answers were either super boring or nobody ever answered that question, we would switch it up so it never, it never stagnated. And we wound up with hundreds of questions um, over the course of the year that we worked on this book. It was a fast project. I printed up little cards for Sheila and Heidi and I to give out um, on the street to women who were wearing something interesting. Uh, Sheila never did. She was too shy, and I don't think we ever got a response back, but it was fun to try. I think they just thought we were religious or something. And um, so it was, it was interesting, too, in that this has also made me much shyer in social situations because I can ask one of these questions if I'm sat next to a complete stranger at a dinner party, and you're fine because everyone knows the answers to these questions. It's not a case of dropping names or a case of a book you read. These are things, these are questions that are quite personal. So a lot of the replies we got from women were, oh, I felt like I, you know, was talking to a therapist. And one woman actually said, I had to go see my therapist after answering the survey because I was so sort of shattered. Um, so we can always go back to these questions at question period because these are actually kind of fun questions to ask. Um, you know, I especially like the last one. In what way is this stuff important, if at all? I mean, by the end of this book, it seemed pretty important. Um, I'm go just going to take you a little bit uh, of a way through the book so you can get a sense of just how, um, how there's a mix of pieces. This is, a, this is an, um, an interview with a designer from Poland. There's... Um, these pieces where uh, Heidi invented this little um, project that we gave to women to talk about the parts of their bodies that had scars or marks or histories on them. And again, this is something that came up recently in an in interview. The amount of self-loathing that women actually have for their bodies is much less than you'd think. I mean, in the, in the, in the fashion industry, there's so much... 
about correcting, oh, you have a fat thighs, wear these kind of jeans, or oh, you have narrow shoulders, wear this. Do you have an apple shape or a pear shape? There's all this sort of, there's all this matter of fact conversation about, about what we're supposed to correct when in fact women are pretty accepting and pretty healthy about, um, about how they look. And, and there's this strange pressure to sort of pick out these flaws, which, um, which was kind of refreshing and really interesting about, about actually hearing people talk. Um, what happened when we got these questionnaires back was because of repetition in questions, we didn't want to just publish people's answers. So what Heidi did, which was brilliant, was she found patterns and themes in the answers. So all of, there's, there's, a, there's a, we have these sections that we called snippets just between ourselves, but a lot of women talked about breasts, a lot of women talked about being modest, a lot of women talked about being 40. Even though none of the questions really asked those um, really touched upon those points. Answers did, and so the book is constructed um, and organized by answer, by theme of answer, which um, makes for this kind of conversation pit feeling of like, okay, guys, what do you, you know, let's talk about boobs. Like, <laughs> there's this, this, this sort of lovely, lovely little conversation that happens around a bunch of different things. Um, which I thought was great on Heidi's part. Then we had, um, what we did was we started to ask specific people for contributions. We would ask artists and writers and people we admired, like Miranda July and Cindy Sherman and Lena Dunham. And then we realized in terms of diversity, we had to really start going, okay, we need someone who believes in this. We need someone, you know, we need, in terms of ethnicity, a whole a whole range of people, you know, this is a Hasidic woman talking about the shell she has to wear to cover her arms and how self-conscious it makes her. So religious, economic, and, and uh, ethnic diversity was really important, as well as getting kind of those big names, um, just as important.